Hey guys, it's Chad and they're my friends, Dr. Alan here, and today we're gonna to be talking about eye drops because if you're somebody who struggles with dry eyes, it can be a challenge to find an eye drop that works, and if you go to the store, it can be seriously overwhelming with so many options on the shelf. And it's even kind of scary now because of all the FDA recalls that have occurred on drops over this last year. So today I'm gonna to be sharing which eye drops I personally use for my own dry eyes, as well as some of the brands that I frequently recommend to patients I see in the clinic, as well as reviewing some of the ingredients to look for and be aware of, as depending on where you live, you may not have access to every eye drop option. And in addition to all of this, we'll also touch on dosing and frequency, and toward the end we'll even share some bonus tips and ways to save money on your eye drops, because if you are using drops consistently, they can get expensive. So probably the eye drops that I use most frequently here at home are the Ivisia eye drops. These are a little bit newer to the US market. They're very similar to a drop called Theolos Duo, which are the most frequently prescribed eye drop over in Europe. These I like because they feel good on my eyes, they don't blur my vision, and they seem to feel like they last longer than most other eye drops that I've tried. Plus they are preservative free and they are safe with contact lenses. Also they happen to be way more affordable than a lot of the other competitors. Sometimes I find it even like less than 50% of the price of the other brands. Ivisia contains high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, as well as sodium hyaluronate, providone, and an ingredient called trehalose, which all work together to help stabilize your tear film. It helps prevent death of the goblet cells or the mucus producing cells of the eye, as well as helping with corneal wound healing. So it's no real surprise why myself and many other eye doctors I know are liking this eye drop so much. Another eye drop I like to use and frequently take with me either by putting some in my coat pocket or I put them in a backpack is Sistain Hydration. Now I like these because they don't blur my vision or make my eyelids feel sticky or tacky. Plus they are preservative free and they come in these little individual vials which just don't take up as much space as other larger eye drop bottles. Sustain Hydration has polyethylene glycol as a main lubricant, which is rated higher in the research as being better than a lot of other common ingredients in eye drops. Plus, it also has sodium hyaluronate, which is in the Ivisia drops, as that can help with reducing mucus strand buildup on the eye, as well as reducing tear film osmolarity, which are all good things. And then finally, toward the end of the day when I've taken out my contact lenses and I'm kind of winding down before bedtime, lately I've been testing out these eye drops here. First here is Blink 3-in-1 Extended Relief. This I like because it not only provides some moisture to the eye, but it also has two different forms of castor oil in it, which can be helpful for preventing your tear film from evaporating. So if you're somebody that you know you have some meibomian gland dysfunction or MGD or some other oil deficiency in your tear film, that's where something like this may be helpful. Again, Blink 3-in-1 has both polyethylene glycol and sodium hyaluronate in it. The one kind of special thing to know is that these Blink Drops do technically have a preservative in them. It's called Occupure and is known as a soft preservative because when it leaves the bottle, as soon as light hits the eye drops, it denatures that preservative and kind of breaks it down so it doesn't cause any problems on the eye. That's exactly why you always see these types of drops in this kind of opaque blue bottle to stop light from penetrating it. Overall, a pretty cool technology. Yay, science. And then the other two here I've been testing out are from Optase, which is again, a very popular brand in Europe, which is now available in the US. The two I have been testing out are Optase Dry Eye Intense Eye Drops for more of just lubrication and irritation on the eye. And then I also have the MGD Advanced Drops, which are more for people with evaporative types of dry eye. Both of these drops are preservative free. They have sodium hyaluronate in them and glycerin. The only difference is that the MGD Advanced Drops also have trehalose and something called Sacha Inchi Seed Oil in them. And that's again supposed to help with preventing evaporation of the tears. Again, these are a little bit newer for me, but I have been testing them out and am liking them so far. So those are the eye drops that I frequently use throughout the day. Now, just because these eye drops work for me doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna work for you and everybody else. Dry eye is very complex and finding a good eye drop for you is gonna depend on what type of dry eye 
somebody has. So I always recommend talk to a local eye doctor and ask them what sort of factors are at play when it comes to you and your dry eye symptoms. For example, a few other eye drops that I frequently recommend to my patients include both Sustain Complete Preservative Free as well as Refresh Mega 3 because both of these brands are preservative free formulations that both treat the moisture as well as some of the evaporation of the tear film. Just one caveat I'll mention about Sustain Complete is that this is technically an emulsion eye drop, meaning that when you start to drop it out, you'll notice it's kind of a milky white color. And not all eye drops look like that, so it's just important to know that that's normal and supposed to look that way. Otherwise, I've had people ask if that means it's gone bad or anything like that. But just know it's that's how it's supposed to look. Again, we don't really have time in this video to review every eye drop on the market, but I will put some additional honorable mentions in the description below. <laughs> color change. Now, when it comes to dosing or frequency of how often you use eye drops, I think there's a lot that goes into this. For example, I personally do pretty good with my dry eye symptoms now, especially after starting taking like omega-3s, for example. And if you haven't seen my other videos or full playlist about omega-3s and dry eye, I'll put a link to that up here for you. But because my eyes are feeling pretty good, that means I don't use eye drops all the time. But if I have a tough day where I'm staring at the computer screen a lot, or I'm having like a flare up of my symptoms, then I will start using the drops more frequently and more consistently. But when someone is experiencing chronic dry eyes and having redness and signs of inflammation on the eye, then using eye drops more frequently and consistently is recommended. But dipping into the research, there are studies showing that using eye drops consistently at QID or four times a day for at least 30 days does show resolution of dry eye symptoms. With those studies showing that if people continue to use them for three to four months, then you even have improved healing of the corneal surface. But as always, it's best to ask your local eye doctor what they think is best for you. Because occasionally we have patients where we tell people to use eye drops more than four times a day. And now, for some extra bonus tips. First, gels and ointments. Eye drop gels and nighttime ointments are great for really severe cases of dry eye, but they do tend to blur your vision a little bit. The gel eye drops last longer on the eye, but they will also cause your eyelids to feel kind of sticky and tacky. And then nighttime ointments are ideal for right before bedtime, especially if you're someone who you know you sleep with your eyes open just a little bit, or you sleep with a CPAP machine. If you're not sure how to use nighttime ointment, I'll put a link to a tutorial video I did along with some of the other eye drops and ointments that I like in the description below. Second tip is to look at the ingredients of your eye drops and avoid anything that contains something called BAK or benzalkonium chloride, as that is a very strong preservative and is known to be toxic to the surface of the eye, including making burning sensations worse as well as redness to get worse. So yeah, avoid that one. And then my final tips are ways to save money with your eye drops and medications. This here is called the Nano Dropper. This is a special topper that screws onto your eye drops and medications and can reduce the size of the drop by about 70%, which reduces waste, helps reduce the amount of preservatives that get onto the eye, and can extend the life of your medications by about 70%, which can further reduce cost. The Nano Dropper fits on all standard eye drop bottles and medications, and I think is super helpful for anybody who takes eye drops for glaucoma because those medications can get rather expensive. If you want to check out Nanodropper yourself, you can enter the code ALAN10 at checkout and save 10% off your first order. And in addition to this, there are other programs and coupons that are frequently available to bring the price of eye drops down further. So I will put an extra link to those in the description below that like button for you. Basically, there's gonna be a whole treasure trove of stuff in that description, so check it out. Otherwise, please let us know in the comment section which eye drops are your favorite, especially if they were a game changer for you. Otherwise, I hope this video really helps you out. Thank you so much for watching. Keep an eye on it, and I hope you have a fantastic day.